Okay, hey guys, so I've got a bunch of posts to open today and I knew I'd do a mail opening on some of it so I thought why not just do a big mail opening on all of it and it'll be weird and wacky and it'll just be things from all over the place and it'll make absolutely no sense. So first of all, we're going to start off with, if you're watching this whole opening, probably the thing I'm going to clickbait you with and it's this complete mystery parcel. Now, this has been sent to our house so my parents are the first owners of the house that we live in i mean amazon has not really been round long enough for someone to have lived in this house before them and to have their address details in their account and that would be just unfeasible anyway for like 20 years you've just not changed your amazon details but anyway the point is there's a guy and he's called edward and he keeps sending these parcels to our house we don't have any idea who it could be. There's no one in the street who it could be either. But his details are our house number, our postcode, everything. Last time we messaged Amazon about it, they told us to just open it up. And if it was any use to us, to just use it. And if it wasn't, to just bin it. Okay? Uh, last time it was a mosquito net. So I'm very interested to see what he's got this time. But I'm very confused as to how this guy has bought one thing that went to our house... And then must have kicked off with Amazon, like, where's my parcel, you know, and had it resent. Probably had to pay for it again. And has then done it again. How How is this possible? I really don't understand a single thing about this. The thing that makes this really weird is that my mum had a parcel that was actually supposed to go to her um, earlier in the week. Addressed to an Alan Sainsbury. No, Alan Salisbury. Uh, again, no idea. Uh, but that was actually a parcel for my mum. So, you know, that just made the whole thing weirder. So they got two parcels for people who don't live here this week. Must have been very confusing. But let's go. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what old Eddie's got. I hate these Amazon tabs. You know, you're supposed to pull them right the way down, but they just come off one by one. And you end up with a load of confetti. Let's see what mad Eddie's bought this week. Oh, it's a webcam. Oh, okay. Kikui webcam full HD 1080p completely backwards on the uh, video of course okay well if it's the same situation and Amazon just want us to hold on to this then uh, free webcam <laughs> mint I won't argue with that all right crazy Eddie um, if you're watching this video somewhere around the world um, you need to change your Amazon details buddy All right, the next thing I've got here. Let's go over the other Amazon parcel as well. Why not? It's actually not dissimilar. Sounds fucking broken, doesn't it? It's not dissimilar to that, actually. This is a tripod for my GoPro, which I'm not recording this video on because, first of all, I don't have the tripod. And second of all, the GoPro has been so much hassle. And I've recently discovered while trying to like urgently record a video while the GoPro was not cooperating. I just put my camera memory card in my phone works very, very well. The issue I was having with recording things on my phone was running out of space. So just put my camera, camera, go through the effort of just put my camera SD card into the, my phone. Perfect. Well, here we go. This was a, this is just it's, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Just a GoPro tripod. Uh, there's the little adapter there. And um, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, you just unscrew that and then screw that in, I guess. Okay. Well, that was like eight ninety nine. Actually, feels really good quality, and it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, not too bad. What's this from? Did you charge? Did you charge? All right. Next. What's next? Let's go over this. This is a late Christmas present. This has technically already been opened, but let's take another look. This is a late Christmas present because it was coming from. Whoops. Tops. Uh, who are an abysmal company with awful customer service. But this is basically a running joke between me and my brother. Because basically he's been buying the living set Formula 1 cards off the Topps website. And I'm a Manchester City fan and I've been going crazy about Ferran Torres uh, all this year. Because he's just my hype player at the moment. You know, when I started watching this season, I wasn't really watching the actual Premier League matches. I was more watching the Champions League matches. Four goals in four games pretty good and i just kept saying i absolutely won the world for this kid so it just so happened that ferran torres had a living card set, a football uh card living card set 
So let's get this out. Here we go. So Manchester City FC, Ferran Torres. His nose looks awful with his face flipped. That is terrible, man. But, uh, you know, in real life, he doesn't look that bad. This hasn't really worked so good because you just can't get a good view of the card. This this face flipped camera thing hasn't mattered at all in any of these other videos, but that is pretty bad. All right, what I'm going to do is from this point, I'm going to flip the camera. So there you go. There's the Ferran Torres Tops Living Set uh, card. They're all done in the style of like old uh, 70s football cards and or stickers. And I thought the art style was like so ugly. There'd probably never be someone that uh, I actually wanted to get. But my brother got me this as a joke because I've been going on about Ferran Torres. And uh, there you go. It's actually quite a nice card. You know, he, he doesn't look hideous. He, 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 except when his face is flipped backwards. And then he looks very hideous. So yeah, there's my last Christmas present. Oh, lovely. Again, from Tops. Don't buy anything from them. Not worth it. Let's do some Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading card games! Alright, what's this, right? This is going to be the majority of the stuff for a Desperado Barrel Dragon deck. And then that other pack is going to be some Black Salvos, also for a Desperado Barrel Dragon deck. Let's do this. Alright, so this is from Unicorn Cards. I remember back when, I think it was Brotherhood of the Fifers Bear was like four, 14, 15 each. I got two of them off there for seven. Fucking class. Fucking class. Unicorn cards will always be my go-to ever since. So here's what we've got. So we've got two little packets. And this little packet is a great example of things I hate doing. Just buying commons and rares on eBay because I know they're just not worth anything. But with all the local stores shut, if you want to make something and you're impatient like me and you're not going to wait until the shop reopens, uh, you're going to have to order your commons on eBay, which means they're going to have to cost a pound. However... Well, we got two Twin Barrel Dragon for the Desperado Barrel, uh, Desperado Barrel Dragon deck. Yeah, I said it right. Card flipped completely, of course. This is actually quite a legit card. You know, you can special summon this with Summoning Monk. You can special summon it with Black Salvo, although that does negate its effect. And you can special summon it with Heavy Metal Raiders. Then it gets its effect off. Because it's whenever this is summoned in any way, you can get that effect off. So that sort of openness as main... You know, I'll give it a go. Plus, there's just not that many level 4 dark machines that are really very good. And that's why Black Salvo's never really been very good. Yeah, if this card summons tag one card your opponent controls, toss a, uh, toss a coin twice. Results two edges, destroy it. Works with Proton Blast as well, uh, if you need to. You know, if you desperately need to get something off the board. I think it's got, got a decent enough card, you know. It's, 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 it's probably going to be fine. Unless they made, like, another level 4 that could replace it. Um... There's not really anything else you can do about that. Here's the other level 4 in the deck. There's B4 Blast Spider. Very important. Again, fully flip backwards, of course. Uh, very important card. It's kind of essentially, it pops itself. It, it, well, it pops a Dark Machine. But 9 times out of 10, it's going to pop itself. It popping itself is going to mean you can special summon Desperado Barrel Dragon for free. Which means you can just normal, even if you go first, you can normal summon this and just blow itself up. Just to get the Desperado Barrel Dragon out. Then it does damage equal to one of the destroyed monsters attacks to your opponent. Uh, which is pretty lit. Uh, and that also triggers if something destroys, if a dark machine destroys something by battle, it also does your opponent damage equal to their attack. Uh, I know I have two of these somewhere, but I played it safe and bought two anyway because I um, couldn't quite remember if I knew where either of them I already have was. Never mind both of them. Pretty sure they got separated at some stage, but yeah. Uh, where's the other pack of cards? Where have I put those? Man, I'm scatterbrained today. There they are. Okay, what are they doing up there? Brilliant. Alright, so this is the rest of the stuff. This is like the hollows, this is like the legendary collection stuff. This Desperado Barrel Dragon thing actually got started by some guy on Reddit because I've always been a Bandit Keith fan. And uh, I've always played his character deck like since the day we started playing character decks. Like his was, was the first I made. I don't really know why in retrospect, but you know. Uh, I've always really liked playing that deck. And then some guy put something on Reddit and my brother was like, is this you? It meant I had another look at these cards. And these cards are not as bad as I originally thought they were. I mean, it's disappointing there aren't more of them. It's disappointing they aren't better. But they are pretty good. I mean, Desperado Battle Dragon on his own has three different effects. Try and make him decent. And I like to think this succeeded in some way, shape, or form. I'm really going to have to flip that one because you can't even see what's going on there. You know, if a Dark Machine is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, he special summons himself for no reason. During a battle phase, quick effect. Toss coin three times. If they're all heads, you draw a card. 
And for each of them that is heads, you pop a card. Uh, of course, Proton Blast can make those all heads, so you pop three cards and draw a card as well. And finally, uh, if he is sent to the GY in any way, uh, well, a level 7 or lower monster with a toy costing effect. And doesn't that just sound lovely? Level 7 or lower monster that has a toy costing effect. Doesn't that just not sound clunky at all? Next, we've got Heavy Metal Raiders. Um, I actually bought these. I bought the green rare because I thought it was going to look the best. And to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was right. Beautiful card, you know, it's got a lovely hollow on it. And it's just disruptive, you know. Each time a dark machine monster you control will be destroyed by battle, each time it's not destroyed. Uh, and it gains attack equal to battle damage you took. And if it does get destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one from your hand. It's not great. It's not bad. And my aim with that is to use, like, generic dark synchros, like dark machine synchros, like dark strike fight and power tool mecha dragon. Just to kind of, like, be like, yeah, you can't destroy my battle law, so I'm quite annoying now. Uh, the one thing I was definitely going to use is... Uh, is black salvo so let's get those open now we actually got these on ebay the best price i could get for them was three for six pound so i sent them an offer for a fiver anyway and they took it so here they are pretty lit when you can get stuff on offer as well especially when the card's like a little bit more expensive than you wanted to pay ironically around the same time as when twin barrel dragon came out in super rare and i just wasn't prepared to pay the two pound each for them because i have a strong feeling they aren't going to last in the deck very long but you never know they might be the most important thing we've got one first ed black salvo and two Unlimited edition black salvos. Uh, one of the best tuners in the game at the start of 5Ds, but didn't really have anything to work with. So the poor guy just didn't really have anything to do. And that's it. That's everything I got for a Desperado Barrel Dragon deck. Okay. Final thing we have here is a parcel. Um, it's from Hermes, which means it has a massive dent in the corner. I think this is some wrestling figures I picked up. I don't really know what else it could be. <sighs> Man, I hate Hermes. I hate Hermes. I hate Hermes. Please do not ever use Hermes. Any human being watching this video, please just, just, just don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to people you're sending stuff to. Just, just don't do it. Just don't do it. it might take a second to just cut through all the tip. Cut the way off the red tape. Leave the place in a state of chaos and earthquakes. What the fuck? How is this box? What? Huh? What is going on in here? Alright, let's just... Do that. Okay, we've got newspaper. Got all that fucking rolled up newspaper I ordered. Alright. My dog's just down there looking at me like I'm fucking... Yeah. And I am! This bundle's pretty interesting because it's got a figure in it that I've had my eye out for for a good couple of months now trying to get the head for a fucking hell. It's like past the fucking parcel, man. For a, a custom figure of um, Grandmaster Sexier from the Attitude Era who it, I think it was his birthday yesterday or something and he would have been 49, 59 or something. 59 can't be right. That's... Nah, must have been 49. Must was, was Would have been 49. Very sad story, poor guy. All right, okay, so we got uh, Shawn Michaels. That's just, just doesn't matter. Actually, it's quite a nice head, that. It's quite a good head. Actually, just couldn't matter less what else is in this bundle. It's just the D.H. Smith we're wanting for this custom figure. So, that you know, we got a sting with no hair and some kind of fucking massive knob coming out of his back. Kind of like that guy from Charlotte Hall where his spine's too long. He has like a tail. I don't even know what this is. It's like, is it Road Dog? Yeah, I think it's Road Dog. Tiny little Road Dog figure. All this stuff is just getting resold as best as possible. And then uh, we've got the D.A. Smith figure. Now, um, yeah. This is not in um, as good a condition as I'd hoped. You know, I was hoping like it would be fine. Uh, but I couldn't help but notice there was a couple of like definitely bite marks on the side of him there i thought like damage to the paint that's no problem i can just repaint it uh he's actually got really nice knee pads uh the trunks are really nice as well obviously the white and pink it's really nice but actually i think someone might have taken a bite of his fucking cheek as well what what do you think i can get a good look at that that doesn't look right to me i mean because it doesn't look like it doesn't look like jarring like like these kind of because it kind of looks like it is meant to be there. But at the same time, I don't recognise it at all. Like, I don't... That's... It's not good. It's not good. Whatever. 
Well, it's just fucking typical, isn't it? You find a figure you're after in a bundle of fucking shite for fucking cheaper than it's cost on its fucking own and some fucking goggle-eyed kid is taking a bite out of his fucking face. Alright, well, anyway, that's everything I have to open today. So, thank you for watching this video and goodbye.